Hi guys. It is, well, sort of a fine 80 degree day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on Wednesday, November 20th in, here in the heart of Texas in the collapse of global industrial civilization. 80 degrees on November 20th as we I guess we're celebrating the second warmest October uh, in history and probably 2019 will end up being the second warmest year. Uh, anyway, oh yes, my name is Sam Mitchell and you have found your way somehow <coughs> down into this corner of the doomosphere called Collapse Chronicles where we talk about the single biggest story in the history of humanity, the collapse of a planet. And, good Lord, how many choices do I have today? But before we dive into today's Chronicle of the Collapse, I want to send out two big thank yous. I want to thank kind-hearted tribes member <coughs> Mark Dix for the kind donation to what I do here on uh, YouTube and you can always send checks or money orders as what Mark chose to do and, and I do appreciate that and we want to welcome kind-hearted tribes member Gary uh, to the very exclusive club of my Patreon account here at uh, Collapse Chronicles, and anyone who has ever supported my work here, I really, really do appreciate that. And also, I want to send out a big thank you to M.K. Krupp. M.K. Krupp for coming up with today's Chronicle of the Collapse. I'm going to put this little dog over here. And... Uh, <clears throat> This is from a fellow I have never heard of, any website I have never heard of. This is Dave Pollard. Dave Pollard, this is his website, I guess it's his, How to Save the World. Dave Pollard, this is Dave Pollard's Chronicle of Civilization's Collapse. Yes, uh, How to Save the World. We have got to get Dave on the show. Never heard of this band. Uh, so thank you for introducing us to him. And Dave's uh, essay this week, What Would Net Zero Emissions by 2025 Look Like? Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, <clears throat> all right, take it away, Dave. The latest IPCC report, which I guess he's talking about the one that's over a year old, says that in order to prevent catastrophic climate change, global net CO2 emissions will have to reach net zero by 2050 from their current levels of 33 to 38 billion tons rising by nearly 2% each year. The IPCC's past reports have been almost laughably conservative and optimistic, which is just one of the reasons Extinction Rebellion have set a net zero deadline of 2025, just six years from now. It should be noted that total greenhouse gases will continue to rise for at least another 15 to 20 years after net zero is achieved due to the ongoing run-on effects of other greenhouse gases, notably methane, that have been unleashed naturally as a result of the damage we have already done to the atmosphere. And it is at best a long shot that even if we were to achieve net zero CO2 by 2025, it isn't already too late to prevent climate collapse, you know, here in 2019. 
our knowledge of the science remains abysmal <clears throat> and every new report paints a bleaker picture. <clears throat> Expect a fierce anti-science, anti-reality backlash led by Book Hermit as more and more climate scientists concur that runaway civilization-ending climate change is inevitable no matter what we do or don't do. <clears throat> so, what would be required to reduce the course of the hockey stick trajectory shown in the chart above and achieve net zero CO2 in just six years for a population that will, at current rates, <clears throat> be 7%, at least one half billion people greater than it is now. And, and of course, guys, I am going to put the link to this excellent, uh, this excellent uh, <clears throat> web, uh, website and essay on here for you to read yourself. And you can look at all the beautiful charts and graphs that he has put in here for us. Anyway, <clears throat> I think the reason that while parliaments and political parties and scientists will readily accept Extinction Rebellion's first demand of proclaiming a climate emergency. Oh yes, I'm sure certainly the Republican political party in the United States will readily accept proclaiming a climate emergency. Yes, and communicating the urgency for change for most the second demand of achieving net zero greenhouse gas emissions and biodiversity loss to zero by 2025 is simply absurd. Western economies have merely shifted their production to Asia. Their accelerating consumption of CO2 produced goods continues unabated. Our global economy depends utterly on cheap hydrocarbon energy. It is completely preposterous to think that a short-term shift is even vaguely possible. Renewables will not help us. As the chart below shows, new solar energy is not even keeping up with the annual increase in demand, let alone cutting into the still accelerating need for hydrocarbon energy. So, let's be preposterous. We are going to suspend all belief and we are going to be preposterous for the rest of this rant. What would have to happen at a minimum, at a minimum, to achieve this valiant goal? Based on what I have read and on my understanding of complex systems, here are just a few of the things that I think would have to happen. And, and, of course, I would add to this, so even uh, whether 2025 or 2050, uh, as the IPCC is saying, it does not change the absurdity and the preposterousness of this. 2025, 2050, it makes almost no difference. Okay, here's what would have to happen, <clears throat> whatever date you want to pull out of your hat. Number one, an immediate, complete, and permanent grounding of all air traffic. That means no executive jets, no flying for diplomatic or business meetings, or emergency family reasons, or military adventures. 
and don't forget flying to climate change meetings. Achieving meaningful carbon reduction is simply impossible as long as planes are flying. Okay, number two. Immediate rationing of liquid and gas hydrocarbons for essential and community purposes only to get all of the hydrocarbon fueled cars and trucks off the road in six years, or I would say 31 years, uh, in six years, no more travel in personal hydrocarbon burning vehicles could be permitted. And we would have to work hard to convert all public buses, trains, and ships to non-CO2 producing vehicles in that time. If you look at supply and demand curves for gasoline, we would be looking at carbon taxes in the area of 1,000% to incent such conversions. My guess is that most shipping and much privatized public transit would not be able to stay in business with these constraints. So say goodbye to most imported goods, such as this computer, this camera, this, uh, this tripod, these glasses, this made in China cup giving me cancer. Anyway, number three, all, otherwise known as 100% of hydrocarbons now in the ground would have to stay there all over the world, effective immediately. We would have to make do with existing reserves for a few years until everything had been converted to renewable resources. Okay, number four. Industrial manufacturing based on fossil fuel use would have to convert in equal steps over the six year time frame and any plants failing to do so would have to be shuttered. Number five, <clears throat> construction of new buildings and facilities would have to stop entirely. Yes, construction of new buildings and facilities would have to stop entirely. Uh, I'm sure that this man is aware of the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, which is the single biggest construction boom in the history of humanity since we climbed down from the trees. So what he, it, you know, some people I've interviewed here on Climate Chron on Collapse Chronicles saying the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative is the single biggest threat to planet Earth bigger than climate change. It would have to be completely derailed. Uh-huh. Existing buildings would have to phase out their use of fossil fuels over these six years through rationing and cutoffs for non-compliance, and they would have to be remodeled to meet stringent net zero energy standards and to accommodate all new building needs. Yes. Number six, <clears throat> trillions, trillions with a TR of trees would have to be planted and all, all forestry and forestry clearing stopped entirely. Again, I'm sure this man is aware of, uh, of Hyer Bozo Nero a ramping up in his all-out attack on the biggest forest on the planet. <clears throat> Likewise, production of other new high-energy-use building materials, especially 
concrete would have to cease. I, uh, again, I refer you to uh, China where the reports I've read is that China has poured more concrete in the 21st century in the last 19 years than the United States has poured in since 1776. Yes. We would have to quickly learn to reuse the wood and other building materials we have now. Okay, number seven, all this centralized, unprofitable activity and enforcement of restrictions would need to be funded through taxes as during the Great Depression, the rich could expect tax rates north of 90% on their income and a very large wealth tax would be needed to quickly redistribute wealth so that the poor did not overwhelmingly suffer from the new restrictions. Oh yes, that is going to happen. And of course, we get to the bottom of the list, number eight. Number eight, the consequences of the above seven would be an immediate and total collapse of stock and real estate markets and the flow of capital. The 90% of the world's wealth that is purely financial and not real, stocks, bonds, pensions, etc., would quickly become substantially worthless in this negative growth economy, adding a complete economic collapse to the crisis, crises the governments trying to administer the transition to net zero were trying to manage. In such an economic collapse, many governments would simply fail, leaving communities in their jurisdictions to fend for themselves and making it likely that much of the world would abandon the constraints of net zero transitions because they would not have the power or resources to even begin to enforce them. But now we're going to step out of preposterousness and we're going to head back to reality at the end of this essay. <clears throat> of course, none of this will happen. Even if governments had the power and wisdom to understand that what was really required to make the net zero transition, it would be political suicide for them to implement it. It will not happen by 2025. It will not happen by 2050. It will not and would not happen by 2100, even if we had that long, which we do not. The message of all this is that we cannot save our globalized civilization from the imminent end of stable climate, affordable energy, and the industrial economy, all of which are interdependent. No one and no group has the power to shift these massive global systems to a radically new trajectory without which, and perhaps even with which, our world and its human civilization are going to look very different. No one knows. No one knows how and how quickly this will all play out and the scenarios under which collapse will occur vary from humane 
collaborative and relatively free from suffering to the very dystopian. There is, therefore, no point dwelling on them or even trying to plan for them. As always, we will continue to do our best, each of us, with the situation that presents itself each day and our love for our planet and its wondrous diversity will play into that. Our best will not be enough, but we will do it anyway. Well, we shall see about that, uh, but amen. Dave Pollard for your latest Chronicle of Civilization's Collapse. Making uh, your chronicle has become my chronicle. And with that out of the way, uh, I need to uh, go stuff an, an old tarp, an old plastic tarp. A uh, 60 by, what is this, 40 by 60 foot plastic tarp uh, into the back of my gas sucking truck and run it up to the local landfill where it will sit for the next 10,000 years. <clears throat> and when I finish doing that, I got to come back and uh, start studying for my interview tomorrow with energy analyst Gail Verberg. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your last name correctly, Gail. So look forward to that interview coming up on Collapse Chronicles. And if you enjoyed uh, today's Chronicle of the Collapse and the interviews and whatnot, please spend a few seconds to go over and thumb up this video or even thumb it down if you did not like it. Uh, and by all means, please subscribe to Collapse Chronicles uh, if you like what you hear. Like what you hear about the collapse of a planet. Hmm. Bye, guys. <laughs>